so You're listening to a Mamma Mia podcast. Mamma Mia acknowledges the traditional owners of land and waters that this podcast is recorded on. Hello and welcome to Mamma Mia Out Loud and to our Friday show where we take a break from the news cycle and breathe out. Today's Friday the 28th of June and I'm Mia Friedman. I am still driving the bus today. Holly will be back on Monday. And I'm Jessie Stevens. And I'm Em Burnham. Can't get rid of me. I'm here. We've tried. <laughs> we tried. I also host our daily entertainment podcast, The Spill. Out Louders, in case you missed it, we also host other podcasts because we're very busy and important. We're not really. What's on everyone else's shows well, this week? speak for yourself. My other podcast is really important and it's mm. full cancelled. And if you think I didn't spend a week... I'm going to say ball steep in Jude Law's cheating ball scandal steep. with the nanny. <gasps> oh, this is a Gen, Re- Gen X a special. Did you know that the nanny kept a diary and that I have excerpts from the diary about her affair do. with Jude Law? Is this ethical? Absolutely not. Oh my God. Cancelled isn't about being ethical. Anyway, no. so we look at Jude Law and his life and crimes and how for his <laughs> latest role he wanted to smell like fecal matter and uh, rotting flesh and how he achieved Stop that. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a fun one. That's brilliant. Jude Law on cancelled. <laughs> on no filter, what we talked about actually this week, sometimes people get annoyed because when it's uh, Holly, Jesse and me on this show, we all have children and that is a particular worldview. I'm one of those people that view. gets annoyed. Yeah, yeah, because as a mother, well, you're not one, exactly. are you? And lots of people aren't. So this week I spoke to a woman called Farrah Storr and she's a journalist and she's an editor and 10 years ago she decided to be a non-parent, <laughs> which is really interesting. You know this whole thing about childless versus child-free mm. and she says she doesn't want to be called either of those things because childless implies that her life is less because she doesn't have children and child-free implies that she like doesn't like children and that she's happy mm. to have no children. She is happy not to be a parent She's 45, she just turned 45. And interestingly, when she decided to become a non-parent was when she was about to start IVF. Oh, She'd been trying to get pregnant for a while and she'd been seeing a fertility specialist, her and her husband. And look, she tells the story, but she talks about what life is like on the other side of that decision. So at the age of 45, it's been, you know, 10 years pretty much since she decided not to have kids. And she wanted to almost send a postcard to people who are maybe thinking they don't want kids or who don't know Mm. they don't want kids and say, this is all the great things about my life now. Oh, I love that. It's very interesting. And what have you been talking about on The Spill this week? On The Spill earlier this week, we talked about Kylie Jenner and the Kardashians in general. I know you guys talked about Kim on Wednesday's show. Yeah, She's only got 10 good years left. She only has 10 good years left. Kylie, Kylie has more. It's Kylie fun. has more. She's younger. She was actually crying on one of the latest episodes of the Kardashian because of all the criticism she's been getting about her face. If you've seen, like, been on Twitter, you'll see so many tweets about her, people saying that she's botched her face. She's been reading all of those and now she's kind of going through this whole thing of, like, why are people talking about my face? Mm. And we were discussing whether she's kind of either it's a... It's tricky, bi- isn't it? It's tricky because I'm like... You have set unrealistic beauty standards for mm. all women, but you're also a byproduct of that. Yeah. Like you yourself can't achieve those True. beauty standards. Are you fair game or are you not? Exactly. Yeah. But it's also not just I, I reject the premise of that it's inherently unfair or wrong to talk about someone's appearance. Mm. I mean, it's wrong to say they look ugly or they're blah or be demeaning about them. But to just observe that someone doesn't look the way they used to look or that their lips are so big they can't talk. Like those kinds of things are... I don't know if you've been on the internet lately, but I don't think people are good at just objective observations. I think you're an ugly piece of shit. And she was talking about how this has been happening before she even had any surgery, like since she was a child, because she was the youngest Kardashian. She's been on the show since she was like nine. And she's like, Mm -hmm. everyone's always talked about my look. So out loud as we'll put a link in the show notes. On the show today, there's a new etiquette guide for partying. Yes, you heard me correctly. And I really need it because I'm here to party. No, I'm not really. But it is all the lessons that we didn't know that we needed on how to party without regrets. And it's not just like party, party, like. It's how, it's how to be a house guest. Yeah, it's how to be a house mm. guest. Dinner party, could be any kind of party, barbecue. Plus a TV show that blends supermodel standards and high kicks and a must-watch wrestling movie, a piece that will get you asking, am I unconfident? Yes, it's our weekly recommendations. And we also wrap up the week with our best and worst, which includes a curvy puppy, a plane ride from hell, and a tumbling tower of cocktails. But first... 
In case you missed it, according to Twitter, which is where I get all my information now, there are four types of handsome. So we have eagle handsome, bear handsome, dog handsome, and reptilian handsome. I don't think I'd want to be reptilian handsome. <laughs> is this like rodents? Similar. Boy, I think rodents was the evolution of reptilian handsome. A lot of people <laughs> said that this was a bit mean, that, that if we were categorising women according to like if we had rat girl summer and we picked a whole lot of girls that look like, look a bit rodent-like, that that would be frowned upon and so why is it okay to do this to men? I don't think it's mean to men. I think we're calling them handsome. I think we allow all men to be really good-looking. They're just different categories of good-looking, mm-hmm. whereas with women we're like you're either hot or you're not. So true. Or you're just all ugly in different ways. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we have eagle handsome and that is kind of the man who... Even if it's not your type, you can't deny that they're really good looking. So like strong bone structure. Strong bone. Like, like very like if you were to draw an ideal man in like a cartoon, that would be them. Like George Clooney. George Clooney, Ryan Gosling. I want to say Michael yeah. B. Jordan, Glenn um, Powell. Dr. Chris Brown. Yes, yeah. eagle handsome. Eagle, eagle handsome. handsome. You know what? I love that handsome. Matt But it's, it's never been for me. <laughs> <laughs> It's not for me either, but I you can't deny. Yeah, they're I can't good, deny they're, it. They're good yeah, looking. Yeah, yeah. And yeah have, no, I've never dated though. I dated yeah. no, I've never really they're dated. They're kind of those too guys. chiseled and perfect. I think it's a bit of a like if you say your boyfriend is eagle handsome, I'm like, mm, <laughs> you think your boyfriend's really good looking, <laughs> which is quite mad. It's a humble brag. It's yeah. kind of like you know, like the Thunderbirds. If you remember the Thunderbirds, Do I you don't know what the that Thunderbirds. Is. Oh, oh god, no. they were like don't puppets. Bring up the Thunderbirds. Okay. Not in front of him. Okay. And then we have Bear Handsome. Henry Travis Cavill. Kelsey. Travis Kelsey is a big bear. Ah, uh, so bear is is like, like your big, broad, rugged, mm. broad. Jason big Momoa. Ah. Thick neck. Yeah, thick neck. Okay, yeah. got it. Got it. Like rugged. Dog handsome. It's kind of like a little puppy dog. You want to play with them, like Dev Patel, Heath Ledger's mm. dog handsome, John Legend. I like them. I think. I think there's a charisma yeah. to kind of a round face like that. Mm. And then we have reptilian handsome. The only example I could find was Timothy Ch- Chalamet. 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 Isn't he? <laughs> Chama- I thought he was. Chalamet. I thought he was Rat Boy. Yes. Summer. So he's like also an evolution of Rat Boy. Also, I think Harry Styles might be a bit reptilian. Ah. And ah. also maybe the one who who was in the idea of you, the Anne Hathaway one, is he a bit reptilian? No. Nicholas Galatzine, I think he would be either dog handsome or eagle handsome. Right. Okay. What about Jacob Elordi? Oh, oh, reptilian maybe. He's I think a little bit, yeah. Pointy features. Oh, oh no, but also bear. I, no, yeah, I don't think really he's bear. I think he's probably. Mm, he's not eagle. He's not eagle, you're right. It's quite hard. All right, Brad Pitt. Holly's not here. We've got to categorise oh. him. He'd be eagle handsome. Hey, eagle, surely. How about Leonardo DiCaprio? I'm thinking dog. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. No, he's eagle handsome. Really? Yeah. Mm, I Producer think... Anne's nodding. He's eagle handsome. Okay. No, I think Titanic, he was dog, mm. but oh, now okay. he's probably more reptilian. Barack Obama. I was going to say bear. There's just something quite... Oh, okay. Like, I'm interested in this. Bear handsome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I he's think eagle of, handsome. Uh, yeah. See, or that, I think you're dog. thinking eagle handsome because he was president. Yeah, probably power. I think he could be dog handsome because he's kind of a little bit goofy. <laughs> Out loud, if anyone's still listening... <laughs> We've got more to talk about. We just would like you to uh, randomly name any famous man and then categorise him as either eagle, bear, dog or reptilian. Yeah. And they're all hot. Like we're not they're taking this. They're all oh, hot. We're not. There's oh, yeah. Every man's hot. There's just, yeah, exactly. A new etiquette guide published by the New York Times has generated quite a bit of chatter due to a number of questionable rules. It was collated by asking highly sociable people from Ivy Getty to Rufus Wainwright, for their tips on how to be a stellar guest and a gracious host. We have three different generations here. I think. Mm. Are you Zed? I think I'm a zillennial. I'm just going to call you a zillennial. So I thought I would present some of these rules to our little council. You're a millennial Mm. and I'm a Gen X. Yes. And then get our perspectives, right? And Mm -hmm. just see if they are universal. First one. And these kind of go from getting there to leaving. They go through the whole. Yeah, Yeah, even getting ready, which I really like. It's about psychologically preparing. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to go, go. Do not plan to leave the party early. If you have to leave early, I say do not come and don't ask who else is coming. That is rude. Agree or disagree? I love this. I think this is so true because I do all of those things and I'm so rude. Mm. I always plan to leave the party early. 
The first every thing, party. What, yeah. The first thing I ask when I'm invited anywhere is what time does it end? That, that is, is so, so mean. And I. I <laughs> Oh my god! But I like to psychologically prepare this part. You of my ask psycholo- the host what time it's going to end. Yes, I really like parties with an end time, preferably two hours after the start time. Okay, that's my preference. And whenever I have any kind of a party, I always have an end time. We're here for a short time. Not a long and how time. do you feel? You're having something at your house, yep. and then you invite me, and yep. I go, um, "Yeah, yeah, I'll think about it. Who's coming?" Do you think that's rude for me to ask I who's... do. I don't actually ask who's coming. Right. I don't because I do think that's rude, but I always want to know. I wouldn't yeah. mind knowing. That's why I don't mind because like a bit of a group chat. Like a bit of a Facebook event. Yeah, just to do a little yeah. who's going, who yeah. isn't. Yeah, what my favourite thing is when someone will send out an invitation and they'll do that BCC thing and then someone will or they'll accidentally send out everyone's email address yeah. so you can see it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I care about who's going. But do you ask or not? No, never, never. And do you agree if you have to leave early, don't come and don't plan to leave I early? I think that, yeah. you, that you tell the person that you have to leave early. Like I would say be transparent about it. I think it's dependent on time. Oh, I like, feel like that's rude. I'd prefer to just go. If you're telling me early on with the invite saying I have another event, that's I need I mean. to leave yeah. early. If you're telling me the day off saying FYI I have to leave early, don't come. Annoying. Why would you come? Yeah, because I'm also like don't tell me that. You've just given me mental load yeah. of like. It's a vibe kill. Yeah. There are certain things that will irk the host. One is when you ask the question that should never be asked, what should I bring? Instead, you should say, I'm already planning on bringing some champagne and wine. What else should I bring? Or don't even ask and just show up with something. I thought that was clever. But I think that if you say, I'm already planning on bringing champagne or wine, what else should I bring? I'm expecting you to say nothing else. Oh, so my goodness. So if you goodness. tell me to bring another additional if you thing. If bring a platter, I'm going to be like, I don't have enough money for <laughs> no, a platter. But I think you misheard. I'm already bringing <laughs> the champagne and wine. I called you for a thank that's, you and that was the end it. of the conversation. I have got a very strict rule that I wish everybody knew is do not ever, no matter what kind of party you're going to, do not bring flowers because your host is stressed. They're busy. You give them flowers, you you've given them a job. Mm. I love flowers. I disagree no, completely. No, but send them the morning of or the next day. Don't turn up mm. while they are doing 100 things and plonk what flowers at them. and they send like it flowers? Th- send them that day. Well, that's send more work the morning. and you've got to pay attention. I don't mind getting flowers on the day of. I'll find a vase. Mm. When I come over to your house, I'll find the vase for you and put the flowers in. Yeah, I agree. Oh, well, if you're going to do that, that's different. But if I've got, I'm trying to get my shit organised, don't make me get a vase. Go into the party and meet three people. (laughs) Ten words or less, elevator pitch. What do we think? I feel like this could backfire. Do you know what? My mother-in-law's like this. So at your engagement party, Jessie, my mother-in-law She works a room. She loves a room. I'm like, I don't know if you know anyone. And she's like... That's okay. I love this. I live for this. And I haven't seen that side yeah. of her. She like goes into a room and introduces herself to every single person, which I'm the opposite of me. Yeah. I will like look for someone I know and sit with me them too. in the corner. Me too. Oh, I think I would take it too literally, like it's something I have to achieve. Like so I'll talk dating. to someone and be like, sorry, I have to move on <laughs> to my next person. I need to go over here, talk to that person. Elevator pitch sounds weird. Yeah. It feels rough. What are you pitching? Do you know before you even get there, there was another point in here which I wrote down, which I loved, where it says don't, you know, what what should you bring? It says bring a sense of humour, bring positive energy. That anecdote of yours, cut it by 98%, practice it in front of the mirror and in six months you can bring it to the party. <laughs> Oh. And then it says in terms of what you wear, if you get dressed for a party, make an effort. You honour your host by making an effort. You don't just show up in Uggs and a neck donut. <laughs> <laughs> this, that felt pointed. That felt very pointed. I feel like that could be you, Jess. Because I get confused. If I'm going to someone's home, yeah. then I treat it like a sleepover. Like I treat it, mm. I went to a friend's house recently and I thought it was quite low key. And I was in a version of my pyjamas and I got there and realised this was not a pyjamas event. Like they just had like jeans on, but I was like, who wears jeans in their own house? So I mm. I did need that. I once I had, I once hosted just girlfriends for dinner on a Sunday night and one of them was like scandalised that I was wearing Ugg boots. Yeah. I didn't know her very well. We're not, funnily enough, we're not really friends anymore. But she apparently was saying to the other people, I can't believe me is wearing in your own house. In my oh. own house. And I can't believe you had shoes on. Exactly. She was wearing like a kitten heel or something. Oh, and I'm no, like, no, no, I'm no, in no, an no. apartment. No. It's Sunday night. We're having pasta sitting on the ground. 
Come on. Oh, cute. Okay, here's the other one that came up a lot. It was separate from your partner. Both of you should cover sort of like each side of the room. And then another one said that you should never sit spouses together. You see your spouse all the time. What do you think? I've been in this situation. I went to a birthday dinner, hadn't been with Luca for that long, didn't know any of his mates no. and we were separated. No. it was. I, I had the most interesting conversations with the people around me but but did your heart sink a little bit yes, when you got when there? when I first realised. Because mm-hmm. you're like, this is so much more work for me. Yeah, and I will say that it depends on your life stage, but sometimes you're really looking forward to a night out with your partner. If you have one. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's like some, Not an issue for M. Yes, uh-huh. but like if I'm you, always with random people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get a choice. I'm just there very, talking, very doing my elevator pitch to whoever will listen. I think it listen. really depends on whether you're, what kind of person you are. Because if you're an introvert or you've got, your social battery's low, it's really nice to have like at least on one side someone that you don't have to try with mm. and someone that you can just talk to. I mean, extroverts are fine yeah. because for, for an extrovert there's no such thing as a stranger. It's just a friend you haven't met yet. And so you can have a stranger on each side and you can be fine. Now, for me, I find that completely exhausting to have two people I don't know on either side of me. Mm. No. I, what I do you find? I think it's also dependent on the host having to know everyone really well because I've been in situations at dinners where they've tried to mismatch people and I'm never close to my friends. And I think the host thinks it's people who she will find interesting to interact together, but the people who are actually interacting yeah. aren't finding each other uh, interesting. So she's curating. Yeah. It's uh, like yeah. she's watching from above and just I like, I want to see what, how this that. works And out. to me, it doesn't have to be a romantic partner. It just has to be someone that you know. Like sit, yes, sit people yeah. next to them and they know. But I want to ask you about the etiquette of the Great Aussie Barbecue, sitting women in white at one end and men at one end. And that always tends to happen, doesn't it? it hosts will never seat people like no. that. But I find that people generally. I think you've, got, I pref- le- I pref- I think you've got to let people. People's social time is finite. Mm. It's a big thing to like yeah. if you're going and that's your Saturday activity. Do I want to spend it yeah. with, you know, Mia's boyfriend who mm. I don't really yeah. care about and might never meet Probably again? Not. Probably not. Like no. I just want to speak to my people yeah. and I reckon you got to let them. But yeah. the only problem with that is that if you're the host, you can end up sitting in a really dud spot. Oh, yeah. If you just let everyone do it, then you can end up like right at the end of the table oh, next nice. to the person you didn't really want to invite. Yeah, in that case you just say, I'm the fucking host, get up, and then you sit at the interesting part. Everyone knows it's the better end of the table. You know when you're in it, you know when you're not in it. And it's a misnomer to think that the best place to sit is at the head of the table because then you're stuck. You can only talk to the two people on either side. But when you're in the middle of the table, you've got a lot more options, the people across from you and the people beside you. Very true. You've got like four or five people. They get more leg room, the ends of the table. I think that's all they want. Mm, It's a bit isolating. You're a little bit stuck. They have yeah. their legs. And so you mm. can't hear. Oh, yeah, true. Here's another one that I completely agree with, which is never show up early because the host is always oh. frantic and needs that last half hour. Do not be early. Allow 15 minutes. I think I because my partner is very, very punctual and sometimes I'll sit in the car and I say, just give them five. Give them five. Thank because you. Because I'm not expecting a knock on the door at seven. If it's I, the worst. It's not right. And then someone who's just a, we're just a bit early. Why? Why, Why are you yeah. early? Firstly, I can't understand how. Except and then also... What did you think I was going to be? Did you think I was going to be happy to see you? Because <laughs> I'm really not. And now I'm angry. And with then you. you don't know what to do. Like you're awkwardly standing in their living yeah. room while they're working in the like, kitchen. I haven't blow dried like, my uh, hair. I've got. Go find a vase for your flowers. I've got <laughs> one that was the most controversial that really blew up on Twitter. It says, please don't ask people to take off their shoes when entering your apartment. It's rude. Em, what do you think? Mm. When I first read that, I was like, yes, I do not want feet in my apartment. Keep your shoes on. Ah. So as a yeah, host, yeah. I'm feet like, keep worse. your shoes on. Ew. But I know a lot of Asian cultures, out of respect, they require you to take your shoes off. So if it's part of your culture, I'm like, 100%, do it. I want to yeah. respect. I want to be respectful. I'll do it. Should you always offer as a guest? So Ooh. this is what I've noticed is we, Ooh, that's a good we have shoes outside our, like on our veranda thing. Ooh, yeah. And pe- everyone who enters our house says, is this a shoes off house? Like, and they, the way that people pick up on the social cue, they don't want to break the 
That's never the occurred rule. to me going to your house. Well, that's because you don't give a shit. Yeah. Um, but and we we don't actually care. It's just where the shoes are. But I always think, oh, so that's so cl- socially aware space. for yeah. people to be like, oh, should I take that's my shoes off? That's true, actually. I've noticed more often people who come yeah. over say, is it a shoes off? Have my mother in law takes her shoes off whenever she comes to our house, even though Some people every prefer. time I say you don't have to. Sometimes my dad will bring his slippers with him because <laughs> he hates having his shoes off. So if it's a shoes off house, he'll bring his slippers with him and put them on. See, I don't like it because if you're at a party, firstly, you've probably, it depends what kind of party it is, yeah. you've probably planned your outfit to include shoes. Yep. Secondly, you might not have had a petty. You might not like oh, what's going yeah. on down there. Yeah. You might have blisters. Mm. It might not be for, you might not have bothered to put your fake tan down past your ankles. You might have different socks. Oh, true, true. Holes in your socks. Oh, so you take your socks off as well. Oh, I can't. Uh, I, I, don't, know. I, I think don't surely that, socks are on. I have a quick question about allergies because mm. it contradicted. Someone said, don't assume people are not allergic to things. You've got to ask in the first instance, are there any food allergies? And another said, I disagree. Do I'm not like, tell your host. I disagree. If you have food allergies. Do not tell it, your host. Yeah, it said don't tell them. That's <laughs> just not die. your host business. Just, like just sort yourself out. I agree out. with oh. that. I think it is up to you to look after your own allergies. Unless you are like uh, sending your child on a play date, totally different. What if but if got you got a peanut are, allergy and you're, you're an serving adult, satay? But you're you're a grown up. You are responsible for your own but allergies. The smell don't of make it me or the responsible. Touch of it. So if it's that critical yeah. for you, you need to alert me as the host. I, yes, I shouldn't yes, be expected yes, to okay. ask everybody I'm inviting any allergies, any problems, no. any dietaries. When people are like, any dietaries, the number of dinner parties I've gone to where there's been nothing for me to eat and I just shut up. I'll just like eat my way around my problem. Get Maccas on the way no, home. No, I disagree. And I don't think it's rude to bring it up to the host. I know a lot of people have allergies where it's literally like if it was cooked with that thing. For example, if you have a, like, if you're celiac, and it's been cooked in the same thing as something with wheat. Like you're sick for a week. Like that's just not worth it. I think, you know what? The host would be horrified if they made you I sick. I think I'd be embarrassed mm. if I was the host yeah. and I can see you not being able to eat anything and then everyone else going, oh, my God, Emily's such a bitch for not yeah. providing anything. Yeah. No, I and I do. know no, out loud as please don't at me about I've got an allergy, I'm anaphylactic. I'm not, I don't mean this kind of situation. I more mean like. I don't love fish. Yeah. Yeah. I don't eat lamb, but I eat pork, but not bacon. Like, just that don't. starts getting annoying. No, just yeah. don't. If it's a paragraph, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Paragraph this self like. yeah. And if you've got like a critical allergy, then of course you need to let your host know, but also offer to bring your own stuff. Like, my yes. friends who are vegan, you know, they're like, oh, but I'll bring a salad or I'll bring, don't worry, yeah. I'll eat around it or, you know. Yeah. Mm. A lot of gluten free people I know make a great gluten free dessert. Love that. Yeah, don't give your host a job. Offer to help your host. Last one is about the politics of the goodbye. (sighs) And this is about a lot of people say never say goodbye. It's a buzzkill. Agree. Send a text a day after. They're all about the Irish exit. Mm -hmm. They say that going over is just because then it's like, oh, why are you leaving now? And it's just like this really awkward thing. Totally agree. <laughs> I think that you never say goodbye in person. What if it's a you dinner disappear. party with yeah. six people? Yeah, I agree. And you're That's just really like, hard. No, you I'm just, just going to the loo. The door. You <laughs> never just walk back. out the door. No, I love saying bye to the host. I don't make a big deal out of it as in like, bye everyone, bye everyone. I'll go to the host privately and be like, I'm going to head off. But the host is never in private. The host is always around five Correct. people. And then you've got to Correct. say bye and then everyone's a kiss on the cheek. And yeah. I and now, and now I needed to leave 10 minutes ago. My Uber's there. And now I'm being charged yeah. for a kiss and being charged. And you can also start a wave of everybody leaving, which for some hosts, me, that can be great. Start a wave. I'm like, I'll have packs with my friends. Oh, where, yeah. Because if there'll be like someone coming that is a stayer. Mm. So you don't want to be a stayer. Uh, we've got a, a pact where it's like, okay, at 11 o'clock, I'll get up and loudly announce, okay, time to go home. And I will deliberately start a wave of mm. let's all leave now. Start throwing wine glasses in the sink. Yeah, start yeah, yeah. Start lights start off. Pa- uh, yeah. Blow out a candle. Like just. <laughs> My husband just starts stacking the dishwasher. Oh, but yeah. like early. He'll in go the to night. bed. Yeah. Take your flowers yeah. back. Take them out of the vase. <laughs> <laughs> throw, <laughs> throw them in I'm the like, bed. these are mine now. <laughs> flowers are dead. Get out. Party's over. Outlouders, I want to know your etiquette rules. Please jump into the Outlouders group. What are your rules for hosting, for being a guest, for saying goodbye, for what to bring? I find these really, really helpful. I think I just, I need a clear guide because I'm just breaking <laughs> these rules all the time. Be 
this month, Mamma Mia turns 17. We know birthdays aren't all that exciting when they're not, well, your birthday. There aren't, really, there aren't enough presents. So we want to take this as a chance to give you a treat and say thank you for being on the ride with us. Right now you can get $20 off a yearly Mamma Mia subscription with the code OUTLOUDBIRTHDAY. The offer is valid till the end of June and you will find all the details of how to do that in the show notes. Enjoy, Enjoy. my friends. It's Friday, so we want to help set up your weekend with some things to do. Our best recommendations. We used to do this on every show. We now save it for Fridays so that we can all be a little bit looser and a little bit more, you know, have a bit more breathing space with our recos. Em, I'm going to start with you. I'm recommending a newsletter by Culture Vulture. They titled it, Am I Unconfident or Am I Just Thinking About Myself Too Much? (laughs) It was hooked off an Instagram story by Jemima Kirk. She's an actor. You might know her. She played Jessa from Girls. She did. She's in sex education. She played the principal. Yeah, she did. Yeah. She's brilliant. And a lot of people think that when she's on Instagram, she kind of takes on the personality of Jessa because she does these Q&As, which a lot of celebrities do, like ask me anything. But her answers are just so rogue and unexpected. Like what? She's quite ruthless. Yeah, she's quite ruthless. So right now she has a clothing brand and someone asked her, are your clothes just for skinny women? And she's like, no, my clothes are for rich women. (laughs) 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 She's so funny. So someone asked her, do you have any advice for unconfident young women? And she replied with a selfie looking super hot and the text on the screen read, I think you guys might be thinking about yourselves too much. (laughs) I don't understand. Is that ironic? No. No, I think she's actually being genuine. Yes, and this a newsletter that M sent around is so clever because it's basically interrogating that idea that if you are sitting around worried about your own confidence, if you're oh, thinking about yourself too much. I see. And she's, she's sort of looking at Gen Zs and going, if you're having a crisis of confidence, stop with the navel-gazing. Which is the opposite of what I would think because it was like, am I overconfident? You know, I would have thought thinking about yourself too much is a sign of overconfidence. But, and to me, certainly Gen Z are hugely confident, Mm. like way more confident than my generation Gen X ever were, like with your G-string bikinis (laughs) and your selfies and your boundaries. (laughs) Do you think? I think we... Why aren't you as insecure as we were? I think I am a bit insecure, but I think what we try to do in my generation, and I'm generalising here just from my experience, is that I'm always trying to better myself. So I think the reason why I come across overconfident is because I've probably read an article that said 10 ways to be confident. (laughs) And I try to to better myself. Yeah, because I don't think like, especially when it comes to work, if like the two of you, for example, were to like compliment me and be like, you were great on Out Loud, you, that piece you wrote was great. I don't hear that. I'm always like, but what was your feedback? Like, how do I better myself? Yeah. Like, how do I, I'm constantly mm. thinking about myself. Like I'm thinking about my PCOS, I'm thinking about my vaginismus, I'm thinking about if I was funny, if I, I wasn't funny. I think about your vaginismus too. I think I think about but myself too much. I confidence is found in but doing. What else are you going to think about? Well, exactly. But then when does it end? Like, I think about, like, everything that's going on with me all the time. Who, but, but, like, who, but that not that your job? Is it? You don't have a dog. No. no. You don't have a partner. This is going to sound really sad. Sorry. <laughs> Keep going. Like, do you have a plant? The list. I do have a plant. It's pretty dead. You've but. got a vagina and you think about that. I think I mean, about my vagina a lot. you think about your vagina? Because I don't really think about your vagina. I was only kidding because it would be weird if I did. But, but that's the other like, thing because I'm thinking, like, everyone else is also thinking about me. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So maybe that's where the lack of confidence comes yeah. from. It's like you realise that you're just like no one's thinking about you. Yes. I reckon more articles you read about how or to get confident, confident, the less confident you're going to feel. Oh, Which is what Jemima Kirk was saying. Exactly. I'm going to jump in with Reco. Have you two heard of The Iron Claw, the movie with Zac Efron? Oh, yes, he looks no. so hot. It has Jeremy Allen White yes, in it yes. and another really good looking it man. It sounds like a Marvel movie, is it? It is brilliant. So I, everyone I know in my life who's seen this was like, you need to watch it. It's based on a true story, which is the most heartbreaking part. It's about a family named the Von Erikses who were at the top of the wrestling world in the 1980s. I get it. You're out. I don't like wrestling either. I still don't care Sounds about like wrestling. It's a recommendation. It's not what it's about. It is this really tragic, like, the way that the story unfolds. Ever since I was a child, people said my family was cursed. Mom tried to protect us with God. 
Pop tried to protect us with wrestling. He said if we were the toughest, the strongest, nothing could ever hurt us. I believed him. Zac Efron, his performance in this film is just so beyond anything you would ever imagine for him. And I was speaking to a friend and we were saying he will have an Academy Award in two years. <gasps> like he's setting himself up as such a serious, distinguished outstanding performer. He carries this film. Can you just remind me, because when I think of Zac Efron, I think High School of Musical. High School Musical, but then went on to... Bad Neighbours. Yeah, be Hairspray. like, become almost a, a joke, almost like The Rock, like almost like a joke. Yeah. Like very pumped up, very yeah. muscly, very seemingly quite a lot of surgery. Well, he's that in this. And I thought that the surgery would be distracting, but it works with this era because the era So he is, plays a wrestler. He plays a wrestler and he's massive and so is Jeremy Allen White yeah. because they're all brothers. So they're built quite similarly. But the way in which they're able to juxtapose the strength of their bodies with the vulnerability of what's happening to them is mm. quite remarkable to watch on film. Lily James is in it as well. But it's basically about these four brothers and their father is like obsessed with them being at the top of this wrestling world oh, and wow. it's like... You would not believe the bad luck. They believe there's a curse on them and what happens to each of these brothers. And you just go, this can't be true, this can't be true, and this can't be true. And it's a true story. Wow. So it's called oh, The Iron Claw. Amazing. It's currently on Apple TV. Get the tissues out. It's it's really sad but it's really, really good. Is he also in that movie that's out today with Nicole Kidman where she's yes. with a younger guy? Is that yeah, Zac Efron King. that yep, she's that's with? Zac so she's with like her daughter's boss or something. It's very like the idea of you. Ooh. Yeah, and it's called Family Affair or something Family like that. Family Affair. Oh. And I really want to talk about it next week. So Okay, go I'm going to watch that. that. I love Zach. I have a very oh, soft spot for Zach. Interesting. He was my first crush. I've got another yeah. thing that I want to talk about for next week that I've started watching on Holly's recommendation, which is America's Sweethearts. And it is like if you like to cheer about the cheer squad, it's that, but it's about the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. You need to look like a supermodel but perform like an athlete. Once that uniform comes on, all of the flaws and the problems go out the door. To hear a crowd like that roar for you. It's almost euphoric. And they are different to like the cheer style in cheer, which is all about acrobatics and throwing you uh -huh. in the air. They're like dancers, but sexy, very sexy dancers. And what's so interesting, because there's only two groups of cheerleaders that are sort of famous that I know of. There's the LA Lakers, like the Laker girls, mm. and then there's the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. And this follows the class of 2023 because they've got the women that are called the veterans that were existing and then every year everybody has to re-audition. So all the veterans, of which there were like 36, have to re-audition and hundreds of new people apply, the rookies, and then there's these big auditions and like some of the veterans get cut if they've lost form or they're not as good or there are people that are better than them among the rookies. And then they all, I'm up to episode two, they all go to like a training camp. And what's fascinating is about, they call it the pink economy, where the Dallas Cowboys, it's like a multi, multi-million dollar, it's the most profitable football team in mm. the US league and all those players make millions and millions of dollars. The women, most of them I don't even think get paid or they get paid like just very, barely any, like part-time. And a lot of them have got full-time jobs. They're nurses. They're, it's barely a living wage. And they say they do it for the honour. And then the two or three women who run the team who are like in their 50s and they were Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders in like the 90s. It follows them all the way from auditions through training camp and then the NFL season. It's everything that goes on behind the scenes. I'm absolutely loving it. Oh, I'm going to watch that. Yeah, it's really good. Out Louders, before we move on to best and worst, we know how much you love M. Vernon co-hosting <laughs> Out Loud. We do love having her on the show. And now she's got her own gig. What is it, Em? I am writing the Out Louders newsletter. A lot of you have subscribed to it, but not all of you. So I will be putting links in mm. the Out Louders Facebook group. But I'm going to be writing it. It's going to be pretty rogue. I can't go too rogue because Mia's actually my editor 
for it. So I'll try. It's great. So it's got all our recommendations in one place. It's got your observations. Mm-hmm. You've made a very funny little header for yeah. it. I've added my face to, to the logo. <laughs> and lots of behind the scenes stuff yeah. that you wouldn't necessarily see otherwise. So Out Loud, as we'll put a link in the show notes, join us on the Out Loud newsletter and get more M in your eyes. Want unlimited Out Loud access? We drop episodes every Tuesday and Thursday exclusively for Mamma Mia subscribers. Follow the link in the show notes to get us in your ears five days a week. And a huge thank you to all our current subscribers. It is time for Best and Worst. This is a part of the show where we give you a little personal snippet of our lives, what we love, what we hated. Jesse, do you want to go first? Sure. Look, my worst was flying back from Europe, from France, with a nearly one-year-old. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done. I talked about being scared about mm-hmm. it on this podcast and a lot of people are like, it's not going to be that bad. It was that bad and worse. Because you were um, by yourself. I was by myself. So it began with an issue which was we were going to board and they were like, we've just not given you the right seat. We haven't given you a bassinet, all of that. Oh, so amazing. I had to wait to be the last person to board. So I had to stand at the boarding gate for an hour with a one-year-old who was losing it. And isn't the privilege of having a baby is that you get to go first? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And then imagine what could go wrong. If you're the last person on a plane, there's no overhead (gasps) room, is there? So you wouldn't want to have a bag that has bottles Uh, and nappies and and change of clothes and everything. So that had to go into a different part of the plane, which interestingly was ahead of me and had 52 premium economy seats that reclined that were empty. It was an empty cabin where they put my bag and I was like, I've got an idea. How about uh, me yeah, and my and manic one-year-old have this whole cabin to our... No, yeah. that's not how they work. To be close to my bag. Yeah. And then we got stuck on the... Wait, so your bag got premium economy. Yes. <laughs> and I got sucks. sat in, in economy. Anyway, we got stuck on the tarmac for one hour. That was the first hour of After you'd been at the gate for an hour, yeah. like waiting to get on the plane. So for I'm an just hour. going, you've got a 24-hour journey. You've got a 24-hour journey with a child on you. Could and then we sit on the tarmac. <laughs> sit on the tarmac. Then I went to get something from my bag because she needed a nappy change. And they were like, get out of premium. Get economy. yelled at <gasps> by a flight attendant. And I have this thing with I was being joking, yelled that at. Happened. She yelled at me and was like, you're not allowed to be in here. I was like, I need to get my bag. Oh my and God. she said, you've got to ask a flight attendant every time. So anyway, then I was like trying to get something from the overhead locker. I put her down on the floor for a minute and this man's like, well, now she's got all the viruses. And I was like, I actually am going to punch you in the face. I'm going to cry for you. Well, I was sitting there this first leg. She just wouldn't sleep and I'm holding her going, go to sleep, go to sleep. And she's just hitting me, just smacking me in the face for most of the thing. And then like tears start rolling down my face and I'm like, I'm not going to give this flight attendant the privilege of seeing me cry. <laughs> so I that'll went, show her. <laughs> that'll show her. So I go to the toilet to just privately sob because I was like, oh. I feel so trapped with the baby. With the, well, of with the baby. Who was I going to give a shit? On the floor. She's flight attendant. Um, <laughs> and I had my period, so every time oh. I had to change my tampon, I had to do it with a baby in oh. one arm. And then do my tampon with the other hand. See, that's what Iron Claw should have been about. Like, that, <laughs> is, that is top that's tier. That's Iron Claw 2. Iron Claw Jessie two. on a plane trying to put in a tampon while with the baby hits With a squirming t- baby. Face. So that was a nightmare. And trying to stop the baby from touching any surface <laughs> yeah. in the toilet. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then even like we're sitting there, I didn't eat or drink anything for 24 hours because I knew if I needed to wee, I couldn't. And she fell asleep. Like I would just wet my pants. You needed a nappy. Remember I needed I said an adult you nappy. needed one of those NASA nappies. And then the guy next to me was eating and then she just kept picking up his croissant and trying to eat it. And I was like, that's so rude. <laughs> but also like I have no energy left. Look, that was one hour into the flight. And then <laughs> it kept going. It it's also kept like a nightmare going. because I imagine the whole thing, you're like, okay, 24 hours. And as we were saying a few episodes ago, it's like, increments of three minutes that you can keep her attention. Yeah. Not even, like really no, no, no. one minute. Yeah. And as you were sitting there, like the clock kept rolling back. So you were yes. an app. So it was like, no, it's not 24 hours. It's 25 hours. No, it's 26 hours. It just kept it's going backwards. Nightmare. And then we were meant to kind of have a, a few hours stop. And at that age, all she wants to do is move. Like she wants to practice her like pulling up, her crawling. Like they just get so They're like, look what I can do. around. Yeah. Look at what I can do. But we nearly missed our connecting flight, so had to just run straight on onto the pre- on, like pram straight on. 
Try putting a pram down with a baby in your arms. Impossible. Anyway, she did sleep on the second one for a little bit, but I just sat there with my eyes closed for eight hours. Just with tears. Like, with just tears oh. going, this is the Hungry. worst experience ever. It was hell. Zero out of ten will not do that again. But my best has been not being on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, today... Great. Not on a plane. Yesterday, great. It's like I can mm. drink water. I can go to the toilet on my own. You can I use two can... hands for your tampon. Exactly right. I can use all of my yeah. hands. It's just been amazing to not be on a plane. Mia, what was your worst? My worst of the week is that my daughter is away, so I have got to do all of her jobs. And <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't love it. Actually, I've outsourced most of them to my son, but the ones I have to do, including feeding my dog, and medicating my dog. And to medicate, I have to put a medication in like some, uh, a rolled up slice of like turkey yep. mm. and processed turkey. And she loves the turkey. And she like, there must be a trick to it that I don't know because every time she nearly bites off my finger. <laughs> and then the other thing that's hard is that I didn't know how much food to give her. And apparently you have to just, the bottom of the bowl should have been covered, like just not much food. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. I was filling it to the brim of the bowl. And she's put on like five kilos in a week. This is like the opposite of weaponized incompetence. It's going to be cranky. Like you're doing too much. It's so true. But my best of the week is that because my daughter's away, I've just taken over her room and I just hang in there now because what no one tells you about when you move in with someone is that you don't have your own room anymore. Yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah. It's bullshit. And so I've really missed, particularly because I like – a lot of sensory stimulation. I like lights on. I like music how I like it. I like the curtains open. I like looking at my phone and having screens. I'm surrounded by like five screens in the bed. Like I love it. And I can't do that when I've got a share room. Can you like with my husband? Up? So it's great. I can do whatever I want. So I have the it's dogs like on the bed. Because my husband doesn't like the dogs in the bed. I've got I have dogs on the bed. I've got crumbs everywhere. I eat in the bed. Yeah. I've got screens everywhere. I can do what I want. I feel like a teenager. You should put so a great. sign on the on yeah. the door that's do like, not do not in. enter. Yeah. This is so weird to me. It's really great. <laughs> it's really great. I love my husband, but, being, you know, sharing a room, like sometimes you just it's want bullshit. your own. Yeah. It's crazy yeah. when you get in a relationship and then you forget that you have a roommate for the rest of your life. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's crazy. I never signed up for that. <laughs> What's your worst, Em? My worst is it was my sister's birthday on the weekend, which is lovely, but the restaurant that we went to, which was a beautiful restaurant, great food, no notes over there. But they do this thing where they gave her like eight margaritas that came on this big tower thing that were hanging off this weird branchy metal tower. And they had like candles in it. Like it was this big thing. It was like, it looked like a cake basically. They made it look like a cake, but it was just glass of margarita. And the thing is, is that it wasn't heavy enough to be stable on the table. <gasps> so they put it in front of me. So I was the one that was handing out the margaritas. Did they do that thing where they, they stack all the glasses and then they pour the margarita at the top and then it just cascades into the... No. Because I went no. to a wedding one time and they did that with champagne. It was quite beautiful it looked, It was watch. the same shape, but it was just like this metal thing and they would hang the glasses okay. on it. So I was, like, pulling out the glasses, but I pulled them all out from one side first. <gasps> and then in slow motion, Jenga. I just saw it coming towards me. The whole tower hit me. <laughs> all no. the rest of the margaritas fell onto me, onto the floor. They were glass. It all smashed everywhere. So loud in the restaurant. And the issue is, is that when it happened, I was like, oh, that's so annoying, like, all these wasted margaritas. And I was wearing black, so nothing was stained. So I was just, yeah, like, wiping yeah. myself down. But then the way my parents and family reacted made me feel like I should have been more embarrassed. Like the, immediately before like them even going, oh, my God, what happened? Straight away my dad was like, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I know it's not my fault. But it was like, your fault. But it wasn't. They should have had a properly stable margarita yeah. towel. Or at least told me like which ones to pull out first. Did like I was in they the- tell you it wasn't your fault? I mean, the like restaurant. The, the restaurant. Well, then the waiters came and they were like, we are so sorry. Okay. They were like giving me towels. They were like, don't worry about the table. We'll fix this. Just wipe, just go take care of yourself. I'm did like, they replace the margarita? It. They did replace the margarita. I was going to say when the bill came. But, oh, yeah, no, we, they gave us free margaritas. It's the noise when that happens and the whole restaurant the turns around to look. Yeah. And then you know that the people around you are embarrassed. Um, I've had that. Yeah. A friend look at me and go, no one saw. And I was like, I wasn't embarrassed until you just yelled no one saw. And then like my sister's boyfriend's like, are you okay? And I'm like, it's not like what? Like I'm not going to disappear. 
wet. <laughs> it was just too much. It was too much. Oh. My best is kind of connected to my worst. So it was my sister's birthday. And if you remember, if you listened to a few weeks ago when I was talking about my worst about not getting cake for my birthday. Correct. I think she listened to that episode because she allowed me to use her birthday as a way of also celebrating mine. As a corrective experience. Yeah. She shared oh, her she birthday. So, she's so, like, low-key, but I was like, no, you're going to have the best But I made her get dinner with me the night before. I made her get breakfast with me the day of. Yeah, I made so her get dinner birthday. with me the day after. Yeah. So that's and I got her a present. Like, it was like I doted on her so much and she mm. was like, I just really want to go home. Like, she was like, <laughs> she's like, I'm happy to do this. She was, like, smiling the whole way through. But and it was then, for you. It honey, was this for isn't for you. And you were yeah. role modelling what you wanted her to do yeah. next year. I ordered stuff at the table that I knew she didn't like. It was yeah. just this whole thing. <laughs> I love that you were cosplaying. <laughs> I was cosplaying The her. perfect birthday. Outlouders, we know how many of you were riled up by the generational wealth chat that Holly Mayer and Gemma had the other week. I was riled up too. I saw the clip on Instagram. If you don't follow us, Mum Mia Out Loud on Instagram, but I saw it and there were hundreds of mm. comments, lots of really good points made by people mm. about what generation had it worse off and whether it's just that millennials are off gallivanting around the world, that's why they can't afford a home. Well, we needed to get into the ring for a part two. And so we did that just for subscribers. There is a link in the show notes. That is all we have time for today and this week. A big thank you to all of you, the Outlouders, for listening to today's show. Give us a rating and a review in the podcast place if you like the and show. And follow us. Mia can't believe that I don't follow my podcasts and I often lose them. But if you go to the very top and you press follow, then it will pop up in your feed all the time. We will be back in your ears next week. We want to say thank you to our wonderful production crew. This episode was produced by Emmeline Gazillis. The assistant producer is Tali Blackman with audio production by Jacob Round. Bye. I Driving is hard. <laughs> Bye. Holly, come Bye. back. Bye. It's too hard. Shout out to any Mamma Mia subscribers listening. If you love the show and you want to support us, subscribing to Mamma Mia is the very best way to do so. There's a link in the episode description. If you made it all the way to the end, then there's a little treat popping in your feed. If you follow, it will just pop up. Imagine Um, that. Imagine that. For tomorrow, a Saturday treat, it is an episode that we did, a very special episode about colour analysis. You'll we're remember. Obsessed. We're obsessed. I tried to do colour analysis on mm. the podcast. I think I got Mia's right and I got every other one wrong. You got me almost right. Yeah, not far off. But then we thought maybe we should get an expert on who actually knows yeah. what she's talking about. And um, she came in. Kim. She told us what our season was, what clothes to wear, what colours everyone can wear, what colours no one should wear. Makeup, jewelry, jewelry, everything. And it has, it's changed my wardrobe. It has changed how I shop. I love her. Listen, it's so fun.